Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're in our next section of our study in the fight in gospel ministry, and that section is put your whole armor on. So if you turn to Ephesians chapter 6, there's going to be quite a few things to say in this section, so be ready uh, for a few videos because there's um, quite a few verses to be looking at in this part of the study. So let's come before the Lord. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the honour. Lord, we bow before you today. Lord, we thank you for this day and for all your goodness and love to us. And Lord, we give you the prayers and the glory and the honour. And Father, in his name, we pray that you be with us now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So if you'd like to turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Then verse 13, Therefore take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, which, will, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in spirit, being watchful in this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So the picture here is of a Roman soldier equipped with a shield and a sword and shoes and a helmet. Now the notice all the equipment that the Roman soldier had was to go forward. There was nothing for that Roman soldier on his back. If he turned his back he'd get killed. He only had to stand front on and go forward and fight. That was all the protection that he had. That's a picture for us there's no going back we've got to go forward and our armor is for advancing in enemy territory if you turn to Romans chapter 13 Romans 13 verse 12 14 it says the night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness, let us put on the armour of light, let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. It's a day of light and we've got to go forward and cast off the darkness and go forward in our work for the Lord. The first thing we need to do is put the belt of truth on, which is in Ephesians chapter 4 verse chapter 6 verse 4 14 so Ephesians chapter 6 verse 14 says stand therefore having girded your waist with truth what kind of truth do we need if we turn to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 16 that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ a lot of people today are being tossed about by every wind of doctrine and the way to fight is to get people and yourself rooted in the truth and that is Christ and who he is if you turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 as a pastor 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 it says this charge I commit to you son Timothy according to the according to the promises previously made concerning you by them you may wage the good warfare having faith and a good conscience 
which some have rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck of whom I, Hamanes and Alexander whom I delivered to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme people in Paul's time had lost their grip on truth okay but we're told Timothy was told I this charge I commit to you son Timothy according to the prophecy previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare having faith and a good conscience which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck so there were people who just abandoned the faith in other words the Christian teaching the Christian truth about who Jesus is what it means to be a follower of Jesus and many people today are abandoning truth there are people going in for all sorts of exotic experiences in the church there are people who are trying to undermine the teaching of the church with immoral doctrines you know gay rights activists and all the rest of it and you as a pastor have been called to stand for the truth Jude chapter 1 verse 3 and if you're not doing that as a pastor then you should really come out of the pastorate you're not meant to be doing the pastorate because one of your duties and responsibilities is to defend the truth Uh, Jude chapter one, uh, Jude one, uh, Jude three. Sorry, beloved. While I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. We're, con we're to contend for the faith. We're to stand for the truth. Now, what that means is, as a pastor, you're to be preaching the truth you to know the truth so you need to be reading good you, you need to be reading the scriptures and good theology books that will get in your mind what the truth is the truth of God, the truth of the law uh, the truth of sin, the truth of Christ, his deity the truth of the Holy Spirit, the truth of salvation, the truth of sanctification you've got to get to grips with the truth you've got to study it and know it if you don't know the truth then you're not going to be equipped to fight in gospel ministry a lot of the issues today whether it be pastoral or whether it be apologetic comes down to do you know the truth then the next thing is to be fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19 says and for me the utterance may be given to me that I may sorry is it yeah Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19 as for me the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel you know the gospel gave you peace it, it made you right with God Jesus Christ died on the cross being punished for your sin taken the wrath that you deserved made you right with God when you believed in him you became at peace with God you have this peace now and that is your strength and you must never move away from the gospel you can never outgrow the gospel there are a lot of pastors today and servants of God who think they're clever I've seen them in seminaries I've been in seminaries and I've seen a lot of these young people uh, go to seminary, get trained, come out and think they're clever and they think they can outgrow the gospel, you can never outgrow the gospel the gospel is what will convert people, the gospel is what will be the best pastoral um, tool it will be the best apologetic tool, the gospel is the center of your ministry and Paul was always centered on preaching the gospel and like I said a lot of pastors a lot of servants of God have moved away from the simple gospel proclamation and you can never outgrow that then if we turn to faith 
The shield of faith is the next thing in our passage here. It says, The gospel of peace in verse 15, Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You've got to have faith. You've got to really believe Christ and what he says. Um, Ephesians, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 7. Faith is trust. It's a trust, a confident trust in God. Ephesians uh, 11, verse 1 to 7. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a, a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are of a visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through, through it being dead still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death, and was not found because God had taken him. Before he was taken, he had his testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, etc. So by faith it's impossible to please God if you don't have faith. You've got to have faith as a pastor. You've got to have faith as a preacher. That God's going to work. That God is faithful. Sometimes... As a gospel minister, you're going to meet people who are going through tremendous tragedy. You've got to have faith that God is over everything and will minister to them. Deuteronomy chapter 31, 6. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy uh, 31, 6. thirty one six Be strong and of good courage, do not fear, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God He is the one who goes with you, He will not forsake you, leave you nor forsake you. That's the faith that you've got to have. You've got to have a faith in such a God that He is over your enemies, that He is over your problems, He's over your flock's problems, and you can trust Him and you can trust Him to convert people and you can trust Him to minister to your people who God has called you to to pastor you need faith and um, it's surprising how much the word of God talks about this uh, for your own studies I'll give you some scriptures and you can look at look this up um, Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 it, faith is a mustard seed Matthew chapter 9 22 faith will make you whole Galatians chapter 2, 20, faith is centered on Christ. James chapter 1, verse 3, faith is tested. 1 Peter chapter 1, faith is in the precious blood of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10, 22, faith helps you to be confident in God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we, have, we live by faith, not by sight. Galatians chapter 5, 6, we trust Christ will see us through. So have a look at those scriptures and um, you know see what they have to say to you about faith. But faith is key in ministry. We've got to believe that God will answer our prayers. That God is above Satan. That God is above our enemies. Let us have faith today. Okay, we're going to come back. I'm just going to have a rest for a minute and continue the series. Thank you for listening.